Welcome for Miss Tara Strong. And they actually cut the uh, previews so that we could take Q&A and talk to the fans. It was really cute. So I've seen it three times. And I've been in a lot of movies that I see once, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I could really see it again. It's just so funny. And if you're a fan of superheroes, there's so many hilarious inside jokes, and you catch things, you know, on the second or third time around. And I really think it's so funny. I think the music is great. Mm -hmm. I just love this movie. And was the process leading up to it, since it was a, a movie, a, a wide release, was it a different process? To, to uh, a little bit. So typically we all work together. Um, if you've seen my Twitter, we have Fungal Friday, where we all kind of hang out and make out and do a show. And um, so we're all together, except lately kari has been away because he's doing that little show, Walking Dead. And um, in the film, we work both. We work sometimes alone and sometimes together. And I didn't get to meet any of the um, guest cast members until the premiere. I didn't meet Krista Bell until the premiere. Mm -hmm. And I still haven't met Nick Cage or anyone else. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. There are a lot of people in it. So, yeah, uh, yeah that would be a massive premiere. If they it was a everybody huge premiere. Away. They yeah. shut down Hollywood Boulevard, which is really fun. I don't think they've done that to that scale since the Rugrats movie, really. So it was really fun. Excellent. Uh, looks like you have quite a line of questions, so maybe we'll we'll get out there with your question first. Uh, oh, um, um, according to the Wikipedia page of, uh, I mean, the Disney Wiki page of Marie, uh, Marie, you're going to voice Marie in the in the abandoned sequel. What does your voice sounds like if you did the voice of Marie? I don't know what you're talking about. It is. What is he talking about? What, uh, what Mar is the Marie from the Arisa Cats. Oh, I haven't heard that. That'd be great. Do, are you casting me right now? <laughs> no, I, 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 according to the according to the Disney Weekend page of Marie, that you're going to voice, you're going to do the voice of Marie in the abandoned sequel. Dude, you just gave me like the best news ever. I'm so glad I came to Boston. Breaking news. I'm sure it'll be adorable, whatever I do, but I, I don't know. You stopped me. Yes. I, I'm so, I'm very sorry. Uh, no, this is good news. This is great news. You just got me cast in a part. Disney can't say no now. <laughs> so, what does your voice for Marie sounds like? I just don't know. Oh. You, you, I just don't know. I'd have to read the script and see the drawings. There's a lot of things that go into this. Oh, oh okay. So, you don't, so, you don't know. No, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm well, sorry. No, that, that's, that, that's okay. Okay, that, was very, that was very surprising, though. Thank you. Anything else I'm casting that I don't know that I have? Hey, Can I be on The Simpsons? That's okay. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Hello again. Hello. Hi. I don't know if you remember me. We met Friday. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, my question for you is, uh, out of all the characters you voice, do you have a favorite character or characters that you voice? Well, I have so much fun doing every role. When people say, what's your favorite? It's kind of like picking your favorite child. But my favorite all-time booking was Melody from The Mermaid 2, because I don't know what little girl didn't want to. Yeah, you can clap for that. <laughs> I mean, I still have the Little Mermaid poster hanging in my childhood bedroom. So like to get in the booth and sing with Jody Benson was such a dream come true. Like that was like my ultimate animation gig. All right, that was really interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi. Go ahead. Out of the Harleys you do, which one's your favorite? Ooh, 
good question. She asked of the Harleys that I do. Let's see if there's any Harleys in here. Stand up, Harleys. Woo! All right, not bad. Um, I always love doing Harley. Like, anytime I get to play Harley, it's really exciting because it's like therapy. You'll find out about that later. Um, and my favorite is only because, personally, I love dark superhero stuff, so I love doing, like, the first games like Arkham City and stuff where it's like really dark. I, I like doing those sort of heartfelt, crazy, um, deep sort of moments for her that I can really sink my teeth into. But I do love doing every single kind. Thank Good you. question. It's Charlie Brown. It is Charlie Brown. It is. Uh, first, just wanted to say that our family loved Teen Titans Go. We've seen it three times already. Yes. <laughs> How'd you like that scene in the, in the credits? It was awesome. Actually, my, my favorite part of the credits was when they had all of your names so huge. Wasn't that was, cool? Finally! Usually animation credits are like, oh, you I know. missed it. So that, right. was, that was pretty rad. Thanks. Um, so I'm just wondering, after the success of the movie, if you are already planning your post-animation rap career. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I did a Twitter poll and I'm like, who is best rapper, Raven or Liliati, and Raven won. So I think that says something. I should probably look into that. All right. Yeah, Raven is definitely the best rapper. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, your, your Twitter feed is very entertaining, and particularly this weekend, because I understand you're, you're getting table dances. Did you guys see that on my Twitter? I think that's a new thing now. Like, you come to my table, you best be ready to dance. That's what I, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I like it. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, hi, nice to meet you. Really big fan of everything you've done. Everything you've done. And uh, like, I'm an animation major, and, and I've seen plenty of animation animations with you in it, and it's amazing. Uh, so my question is, like, you do many, many voices, voices, and and I do my own animation, own animations, which would include doing the voice, doing the voices for. So I want to know, like, how do you get in? Who get into doing like your voices? Like, like for many of them, many of them, you have like different to different tones, tones like different like different volumes. Like when you do uh, Timmy from Fairly Odd Parents and Twilight Sparkle, or from My Little Pony. So, what is your process to find the voice of individual characters? So when the when they send out a breakdown for the auditions, they'll give you a drawing of the character, they'll give you a brief description of the character. Sometimes you get a show bible to see where they live and who they interact with and what their world looks like. And then there'll be sides, which is a portion of the script. And you as the actor have to try to think how the creative team would want that to sound. And then I do all my first auditions in my house and I, I play around with different stuff till I feel it's really ready. And then if you get a call back in front of producers, they'll say, oh, we want her a little older, a little younger, a little heavier, give her braces, make her from England, make her a boy. Like, <laughs> you have to kind of be ready to play around and do that. And I'd say in order to get good at that, it really takes a lot of experience and um, a lot of practice. And I always suggest to take a lot of singing lessons because your voice is a muscle, so you get to learn what you can do. And um, a ton of acting classes. I grew up with all kinds of acting classes, and I think scene study and improv are particularly helpful for feeling confident in the studio because the studio is expensive. So if you're going to go in and be nervous and mess up, you probably won't get another chance. So um, after you've done all that, then you can take um, a class for animation if it's a good one, not if it's a crappy one taking your money. Um, and, and that's how you get there, but it's work. It's not just like, let me read this. A lot of people think it's just reading off a paper, but it's really a different form of acting. It's like asking a tap dancer if they do ballet, and some, oh, some yeah, do. I, I definitely believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. And there's uh, many videos I've seen online. Uh, they might be sort of edited, like compressed, just because they're on YouTube and things like that. Uh, when you're doing an audition and seeing very intense, like maybe more intense than something uh, that you do on screen or stage, where they will switch you over, sometimes through all ranges of emotion, and they want it right there, right that second. Yeah. It's like, we want, we want her sad now, we yeah. want her angry now, and you bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So it is uh, definitely acting. You said it's a, tough, a type of acting. It might be tough. Oh, 
it's really right. tough because you have to bring the action forward with your voice. And if the line is, whoa, you need to know if you see a hot guy or if you're falling off a cliff. And, <laughs> and then you bring that to life with your voice as opposed to an on-camera where you see the cliff. So in some ways, it's more challenging. And I've seen huge A-list celebrities come in and be completely intimidated and leave the room. Mm -hmm. I've also seen some of them do awesome and they're amazing at it, but it's definitely a form of acting. And there tends to be a lot more dialogue because it's uh, just your voice. And uh, if, you, if you see those videos, they're just sort of random ones online with the professionals doing um, incredible talent. Go ahead. Hi, first of all, thank you so much for coming to Boston and you're amazing. Uh, I have my client slash friend, Kyle, here. and He's a big fan of yours. He wanted to know first, is there going to be a season six of the Teen Titans, the original Teen Titans? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been asked that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to say this because I know it's going to be on the internet at some point. And I know Warner Brothers is watching. <laughs> so, help me out here. All right. For those of you who saw the movie, when you saw the end credit, didn't you think that meant it was coming back by plus? <laughs> That's what I thought, yes. but apparently only you guys think that because I said it, but when you see that clip, it makes you think, I mean, they say we're trying to get back to you, right? Yeah. So um, I said that to this guy at Warner Brothers, and he said, well, if the movie does well enough, they'll bring it back. And I said, can I record you saying that? He said, yeah. I said, can I tweet it? He said, yeah. So <laughs> I did. Um, and if it was up to me, we'd have done it a long time ago. I mean, like I said, I like dark. Yeah. And, yeah. and I feel like the original series ended in such a pivotal story arc. Like, what's happening yeah. with Trigon and Slade and Ra Raven and I guess the other characters matter too. But, um, I don't understand why they don't do both simultaneously, and I really love Go, too. And in my yeah. head, it's a totally different show. Like, oh, Go totally is different. silly and fun, and Titans is based on the comic book, and there's definitely room for both. Like I said, if you guys want to do Titans on Ice, I'd learn how to figure skate. <laughs> but, um, I hope so. If it was up to me, it'd be a yes. I hope that it happens, and I don't see why they can't do both at the same time. There's certainly a desire for it. And like, thank you all the fans that keep asking for it and letting Warner Brothers know, letting them know, because I think that's their fear, is if they spend money and do a no show, that it's not gonna be warranted. But I really feel like, of all the fandoms I've seen, um, the Titans deserve a season six. Oh, Absolutely. definitely. Yeah.
very true that they are all part of you and you create a character. And I think it happens the moment you book something. When you're auditioning, you still do your best, but you don't want to own it too much because then if you don't get it, it's disappointing, especially if it's a part you really want. But the second you're in that studio, it becomes an entity. And for me, they kind of live up in my brain, and then they come down, like basically I'm a paid crazy person, and they come down and they talk. And they know how to laugh, and they know how to cry, and they know who their parents are, and they know everything about that world. And there's definitely little parts of me in every single role that I've ever done. But I think that happens pretty much right away. And then with that, the character grows, and they grow along with me. Like every single show I've done, certainly if you look at Twilight, she's grown so much over the seasons. And um, I grow with them. You know, I started when I was 13, so I've been doing it at least 10 years. <laughs> and <laughs> I've grown with a lot of my characters, and I learn from them, and they learn from me. It's sort of this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a very collaborative process with me and imaginary people. <laughs> or creatures. talking to you, you're such a huge inspiration. <laughs> um, uh, my question is, as someone who's voiced so many iconic characters over the years, um, how does it feel to know that your voice will have such a lasting impact on pop culture, probably long after most of I'm you dead? dead. <laughs> um, you know what's funny that you say that? Because I was actually thinking that yesterday. Um, like, you know, when you start out, I, I knew when I was five years old that I wanted to be a singer, dancer, actress. I didn't know which place would be my main thing, but I knew I'd be in that world. And when you think about all the things you do and accomplish, and then I come to a con and I meet these people who are crying or they're saying, you got me through my parents' divorce or this depression or my kid hasn't spoken in five years and they heard you were coming and won't stop talking and it's like, Wow, I, I sort of I just got chills talking about myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you realize the impact that you have on people, and I'm like, wow, I wonder if people will remember me after. And when I think about all the roles that I booked, like how many people get to say I played Harley and Bad Girl and Raven and Ivy and Huntress? Like in, if we think of just the superhero world, and then there's Timmy and Bubbles, and it's like, wow, like I don't know what horseshoe I was born under, but. <laughs> It, it's exciting to have played so many iconic roles, and it makes my heart very happy to think that some of that legacy will carry on. So, thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you. Good morning, Mrs. Strong. Hi. I wrote my question down because I forget things a lot. Okay. All right. So, Teen Titans Go on the internet. While we're all fans, it has been widely known to be made fun of just because of what it is. So, how do you, as one of the stars of Teen Titans Go? react internally and externally to all the negative comments, and how do you continue working through the show through all the negativity? You know, in, in general, I, I try not to watch or listen to too much negativity, even when I'm speaking politically, just because I, I'm a very positive, laws of attraction type person, and that's where I live, so if it's too negative, I kind of shun it. And at first, I was worried that people really wouldn't like the show at all. But then a lot of people online started coming around and said, you know what, I get it, it's not this show, it's, it's this show, it's really a different show. And um, I don't mind, I, I don't pay much attention to the negative because we really love doing the show. We have so much fun doing the show, and you know what? We make people laugh, and to me that's a win. So if we're making people happy and bringing families together, I kind of ignore the people that are like, rah, 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 rah. it's like, we're only doing good. Oh, that's good. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Uh, just going back a ways here. Uh, if the WB ever remakes or reboots Birds of Prey, would you star in it as Dr. Quinzel? Yeah, I love that. I love the Birds of Prey. I mean, my favorite thing I ever did was that song with Huntress and Catwoman. Did you guys see that? I get, yeah, I love that so much, and I guess right before it aired, they axed it because it was too kind of dirty or risque for American audiences, but they did play it overseas, and I think, I don't know, every time I watch that, I'm like, that's hot, like, <laughs> I mean, just because we're talking about his little members and stuff like that, there's a lot of sexual innuendo. <laughs> But like I, if they did Birds of Prey, I hope it would be like that, like the original Batman with that film noir sense. I love that. That would be awesome. Thank you. I've had a crush on you since seeing your trip. Aw, thanks. 
Uh, hi, we met yesterday. I was the nervous side and wreck with the plus sheet. Nice! <laughs> okay, um, uh, one question though. Uh, you're doing the voice of uh, Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle, so I was wondering, did you also audition to play uh, Natasha since that character was also voiced by the late great June Foray? Um, no, because originally I sent in an audition for Rocky and I didn't hear anything. So, um, oh, maybe I did originally send in that audition, but I think had I made it to like a callback stage and done both, that would have been a possibility, but I didn't even make it to that stage. Okay. And they originally cast it with someone else, and that happens often where they want to give a new person a chance or mix up the casting a little bit, and the show really wasn't working, and they actually let go a lot of the, um, uh, staff surrounding the show, and the showrunner is a man named Scott Fellows, who uh, I worked with on Fairly Odd Parents. He also created Big Time Rush, and he put me on that show. Yeah. And um, he was listening to it, he's like, it's not working, where's Tara Strong? <laughs> and so they played him my audition, and was like, yeah, so let's bring her in. And the other, the other characters were already cast when I joined the show. And Rachel does such a phenomenal job, and I have to say, like, um, Rocky is a lot and vocally taxing and he has a lot of lines in the show so I'm happy to have someone else to play off and like I said Rachel's brilliant so it's fine with me Pop the smokes you guys right. uh -huh. so you, did mention, uh, you did mention that it happens quite often so is there a role that you can remember that um, you auditioned for and they gave you something else that was maybe a better role well, that happened to me my very first animation audition. You know, my, I grew up in a toy store, and my parents were the first to import Hello Kitty into Canada. Yeah, and in the basement of our store, we had something called Chachka Land, and it was all like Hello Kitty and By Melody and Twinkle Stars, or whatever that was it called, Twinkle Star? Little Twin Stars. Little Twin Stars, thank you. And I loved it so much, and my favorite was My Melody. She was my favorite. And then, and I, I have pictures of my dad like in the furry costume. <laughs> okay. And then when I auditioned for it, I booked my melody, and I was stoked because I'm like, that's my favorite. And then on the very first day, they switched us, and suddenly I was Kitty. And um, the, <laughs> the girl playing Kitty was not happy. <laughs> she used to glare at me. This is a true story. In the studio, and she's a sweet girl, but she's gone. <laughs> and she'd like put her hair over her face and like stick her tongue out at me between her hair. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that happens. Anyway, it's my little Hello Kitty story. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, so there was a, um, a Twilight Sparkle toy released in the Christmas season last year, a big talking Twilight Sparkle. Um, I was wondering if, if you, did they sample your voice, did they record your voice for the toy, or was it like, uh, another voice actress? I've never been asked to do any toy for Twilight, which makes me angry. <laughs> because when you do a character, like, you feel like, like we said before, you're part of that character, and you want to do it everywhere, and be like, oh, I heard that toy, you were kind of crappy on that toy, I'm like, ah! <laughs> not me, and they never even ask us, which makes me angry, and I'm sh of course it's to save money, because they don't want to pay like a scale rate or whatever it is for the actors, but I think that's a mistake, so if that's me, they didn't pay me for it, so I'll have to buy the toy and find out, but typically it's not me on the toys. Yeah, the toy costs like, I think, uh, uh, about a hundred or so dollars anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, so they're yeah, making all that profit. Yeah. Thanks for the info. No problem. <laughs> Well, maybe we can send in emails to those toy companies because the fans know. Of course. I mean, when you hear the voice and it isn't right. Of course. So. Great. Nice. Right, so, uh, let me say. Uh, a little closer to the mic. Sorry, I'm very nervous. Um, let me say that I really love the, uh, the frequent series of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Mm -hmm. We're great. Um, Wait till next season, by the way. Oh, thank you. It just keeps getting better and better. I'm not just saying this. You guys got to tune in for the next seasons. I mean, I wish I could give you the spoilers, but it just gets crazy. Okay, so my question is, which also relates to that, uh, some other person's question. Uh, how does it feel to play one of the most iconic characters in animation, Rocky J. Squirrel, in the uh, seri reboot series of Squirrel and Moose, and was it a challenge to capture the, end, the essence of June Foray's voice acting of that character while also putting your own spin to the performance, and 
Um, what's, and what's your favorite moment on the show so far? So it's always daunting to step into shoes that have been expertly filled already. And when we started the show, apparently she wasn't in good health and couldn't do it. And for me, that's the only time someone should be replaced if like, they're really not well enough to do it. And they initially told me that they didn't want a sound alike. They wanted him a little bit deeper and more dry and make it my own. And it didn't quite feel right. And I swear to you, the second she passed, it was like she jumped in my body and goes, this is how it's supposed to go. <laughs> like, and it just became more Rocket Jay's Squirrel. And anytime I would sort of tap into her um, delivery of things, because that's one thing about the actors, like you can do an impersonation, but to really tap into that acting and, and, and sounding like how they would say something organically is, that's an amazing thing when that really happens. And um, it, it happened organically. Like if you listen to the first episode to like fifth, you'll hear a totally different Rocky. And I think that just, if you watch the first Seinfeld and the 10th Seinfeld, you'll see a difference. Then as shows grow, that's why sometimes when a network picks up six episodes, like we did, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm having a huge brain fart. Napoleon Dynamite. They only picked up six. And it was all the original cast and this chick. And I'm like, ah. Oh. It didn't have enough time to really get on its feet and build its you know, base, and I think that it's important to sort of do that, and that really does start happening. It's really so funny. So I, I, I am very humbled and honored to do anything that June did, because she really was a trailblazer. And um, I hope you like what I do. Yes, thank you. Did you, did you grow up on the original series? The original series? I wasn't born yet. I mean, I know oh. I look old, but shh. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, on the old-style television broadcast, they reran it a lot. <laughs> no, that was before my time. We'll talk about that later. Where's my bodyguard? Okay. Go ahead. But I cannot explain to you what an ordeal trying to get here. It, we went from hell and back, and all I could hear my daughter in the back seat of the van, I don't want to see Terrence <laughs> Joe. I don't care about anything else. I just want to see her. Aww. And look so, at you dressing up and supporting. Let's give this mom a round of applause. combine any of your characters to make a fusion of some sort, <laughs> which ones would you combine and also like what kind of voice do you think you could come up with that? <laughs> You've actually asked something I've never been asked before. Yeah. Combine the characters, huh? Maybe like a Bubbles Raven combo would be hilarious. <laughs> like, maybe she's really happy and then she's not so happy. Like maybe she kind of slips in and out and we could call her like Baven or Rubbles, I don't know. <laughs> Watch, the internet's drawing it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you, that's a great question. Come give me a hug. Beast Boy and Raven, because that's like one of my favorite ships. Um, I think they're super cute, and I don't think they got enough screen time in the original. And then also, um, what if you had a favorite episode of Teen Titans, what would it be? Oh god. What's your favorite? Um, I really like the one where um, I like the one where Kitty comes and Robin and Starfire go on a date. I know it doesn't have a lot of Raven, but I really like that. And then out of Raven, I think it's the personality episode. That oh, is yeah, my favorite one. Raven? Yeah. That's a great one. I love that. I also love the Tokyo special. That oh, was yeah. insane. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it'd be hard to pick a favorite. I, 
Graves. Such a good show. I hope they do a digital remaster like they just did for Batman. Because I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, but at Comic-Con they played them. They did a split screen. I don't know if any guys saw it online. But they did a split screen of the digital remaster with all the coloring. And I always thought Batman was a beautiful show. But it was like, wow. It was even better. It was amazing. So I hope they do that. Um, wait, what was the other part of your question? Oh, oh do I ship BB Ray? Yeah. Have you seen my Twitter? <laughs> I mean, we make out every Friday, so. We made out of the panel once. That was fun. Thank you so much. You're so cool. Thank you. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you had Ben 10's Omnitrix, which form would you like turning into the most? Ooh. Gosh. That's a tough one. They're all so good, and they're all so important. I mean, I'm lately kind of digging Heat Blast. Yeah! Um, <laughs> I got one! Um, I don't know. Gosh, being such a dweeb. I don't know. I like them all. I like Accelerate. I like Stink Fly. I don't know. What do you like? I like the person. What? <laughs> the flame. Alright, so we're in the same boat, really. Thanks, go ahead. Hey, Tara, how's it going? Uh, 
just want to say, of all the characters you play, my favorite overall has to be Batgirl. Yeah. Especially in The Killing Joke. Yes! Oh. yes. I love The Killing Joke. I'm sorry, but I still got the I Go Looney song stuck in my head. I so want to, I so want to do that at karaoke someday. <laughs> Anyway, and my question is, and I'm sure you've been asked this multiple times, but I don't care, I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> of uh, all the many, many characters you've played over the years, what are some of your favorites? And what are some of the characters you probably like, hmm, didn't really like posting that one too much? Um, well, like I said before, I, I really love voicing everything I do. I have so much fun. I mean, I had so much fun doing Powerpuff Girls with the other girls. Like, let's just say if the um, engineer ever decides to release the between the scenes tapes, I could be in trouble. Um, because we rewrote the theme song a few times. I'm trying to think if there's any PG-13 one I can do. Like, like Bubbles, her butt is wicked, bitchy, Like, we would just do crazy stuff like that, but it got nice. worse. <laughs> Um, and I love doing Titans, they have so much fun. Apparently Ad Parents is really fun. Um, Pony is fun when I'm with the other girls, but when I'm by myself, it's not as fun because it's just me yeah. in a studio. And it's always fun to play off the other actors because if someone goes, let's get out of here, you might go, okay. And it, it changes how you might deliver a line. So that's always more fun for me when there's a full cast report. All righty, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> vocally and it really is all about the acting and, and the singing lessons because you can practice in your house with a stuffed animal or a drawing like how to scream without hurting yourself and where that sits in your voice because I actually think we're all built similarly but differently and like if you come to a session with Dee Baker he can scream in two different alien sounds at the same time <laughs> and I don't know anyone that's built that way um, so you really have to play with your own voice and see how to maintain a, a sound that might seem hurtful without hurting yourself. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Oh, 
question. Oh, she was gonna ask you if you voiced all the ponies. Oh. I mean, I'm sure they're all inspired by me. <laughs> but no. to get started and sometimes people spend their last dime on a demo tape and even that's not a guarantee that they're going to get a job so to then take more money with the promise of a career really gets my angry unit kitty going and I just don't like that so don't pay to audition um, also my friends they're not here right now but they dared me to do a voice for Flurry Heart because they know how much I love that character and it was when she learned to speak mm -hmm. and it's Auntie Twilight. It's pretty good. <laughs> Dare accomplish. Hi, Tara. Yeah, forgive me, I'm, I'm such a big fan of your work. And I saw the Teen Titans Go movie, and you and the uh, you and the other Titans were great rappers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, so uh, I know you've done on some work on Transformers anime, and, and you were great. And, I have to know, uh, what's like your favorite moments of working on that show, and do you have a favorite episode? I'm sorry, what, of which show? The Transformers animated. Oh, Transformers, yeah, I love playing Sorry. That was so much fun. Probably, for me, the most rewarding episode was when she found out she was actually not entirely human. That was really, really cool. That oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. There's been girls on the show, but not girl transformers, so it's cool to be one of the few. Hi, that Rainbow Dash has turned into a Buttershack. <laughs> she wanted to know what your favorite out of My Little Ponies was from uh, phrases in song that you requested girls in My What my very favorite pony was? Your favorite song and your oh, favorite, favorite catchphrase as Twilight. Hmm. Do you have a favorite song? So so? Do you want to sing one with me? Do you want to do an easy one that they let me sing? Um, like sunshine, sunshine, ladybugs awake. Nope, she's not interested. Uh, I don't really have a favorite. They're all great. The music on the show is really great. I don't get to sing because they do it in Vancouver. And uh, Boo is right. Um, and Daniel Ingram, who's pretty brilliant, is meticulous about how everything sounds. And I just can't fly back and forth. But it's great music. And the singers are awesome. So, Thank you. That's my best friend, Roxy. Do I do voices out in public? All the time. <laughs> I, I do. It's fun. I mean, sometimes I get recognized, too, like at GameStop and, you know, places where my people are. Um, sometimes I, I do randomly, but I like, I like making kids happy, too. And if I see a kid, like, with a Twilight toy, I'll say, I'll touch, do the voice. And sometimes they're like, that sounds a lot like her. <laughs> and um, just recently I was at the foot doctor when I broke my foot and there was a little, I don't know, he must have been like three or four years old. He was the cutest little kid and he was taking the book to his abuelita and he was like, read this, read this. And, and I guess she was looking at it and trying to and I said, bring it to me. <laughs> and so I was doing all these voices for him and he was like, ah, ah. <laughs> and it was like a crazy like zombie gnome adventure. <laughs> happy and then it made me sad because I thought about the other kids in cages uh, that don't get read to by Tara Strong. So. Thank you Thanks. <laughs> and the mood of the room is like, Downstairs, and uh, once again, thank you for coming to Boston. Thanks, guys. Woo!